Assuming that's my counter. Welcome, welcome to Patriots Baseball on a beautiful Friday afternoon here in Apex, North Carolina. We have a very special day today. It is Senior Day. We are just getting ready on the field. Today, the Patriots are going to be taking on the Panther Creek Cougars. We are still preparing for the game. We are amassing our senior families. We're going to do some announcements to bring them onto the field prior to the game. So just hang on. We will be back in a few minutes with the game. Thank you very much.
All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome everyone this afternoon on behalf of the Apex Friendship High School. I'd like to welcome you to Senior Day 2024. At this time, we're going to be recognizing the senior members of our baseball program and their escorts. First up, Ben Brockman, escorted by his parents, Robert and Leslie. This is Ben's third season with the program, serving two on varsity. Ben's favorite high school memory was the intensity in the dugout during the team's postseason run in his junior year. Ben was also a member of our sports medicine program, and this fall, Ben plans to attend UNC Charlotte, where he will be majoring in political science. All right, next up, Brady Byler, escorted by his parents, Brian and Allison Byler. Brady has been involved in the baseball program for all four years of high school, serving two on varsity. Brady was elected captain by his teammates this year. His favorite high school baseball memory is winning the conference tournament last year. Brady plans on continuing his baseball career at Catawba Value Valley Community College in the fall, where he's undecided on his major. All right, next I'd like to introduce Bryce Cannon, escorted by his parents, Ben and Stacy Cannon. Bryce has been involved in the program for four years, serving two with varsity. Bryce's favorite high school, school memory is hitting a home run at Middle Creek earlier this year. Bryce plans on attending Wake Tech Community College this fall to continue his academic and baseball career, and he'd like to major in business. All right, next we have Carson Clifton, escorted by his parents, Matt and Tracy, and his sister, Kyler. Carson has been involved in the baseball program for all four years of high school, two on the varsity program. Carson's favorite high school baseball memory is beating Holly Springs in the conference tournament last year. He was also a member of our football program, Carson plans to attend East Carolina University in the fall, where he will be doing a major in environmental studies. All right, next up is the catcher, Ash Doyen, escorted by his parents, Kurt and Laura. Ash has been involved in the baseball program for all four years, two of those on varsity. Ash's favorite high school baseball memory was catching the perfect game last year in the playoffs. Ash has also been a member of both the football and the wrestling program here at Friendship. He's undecided where he'd like to attend college next year, but he will be majoring in engineering. Our next player is Cole Flanagan, escorted by Bob and Kathy Flanagan. This is Cole's fourth season with the baseball program, two of which were on the varsity program. Cole's favorite high school baseball memory is throwing a complete game last year against Willow Springs in the strikeout cancer game. This fall, Cole plans to continue his baseball career at Catawba Valley Community College where he will major in communication and mass media. Next, I'd like to introduce Barrett Lowe, escorted by his dad, Sean Lowe. Barrett has been involved in the program for four years, two on the varsity team. His favorite high school baseball moment was the conference tournament run last year. Barrett 
plans on attending Rockingham Community College to continue his baseball and academic career, where he will major in business management. Next, I'd like to introduce Simon Martone, escorted by Bill and Lisa, his parents. Simon has been involved in the program for four years, two on varsity. His favorite high school baseball memory is winning the conference tournament last year. Simon plans on attending UNC Charlotte and would like to major in finance. Our next senior is Brendan Patience, escorted by his parents, Mark, and his mom, Kibra Patience. Brendan has been involved in the baseball program for three years, serving two on varsity. Brendan was also a part of the football and the track programs at Friendship. Brendan's favorite high school baseball memory was the bus ride home from the Pine Forest game this year. In the fall, Brendan plans on attending the University of South Carolina, where he would like to major in aerospace engineering. Next up, we've got Aiden Smith, escorted by his parents, Andrew and Candace, and his brother, Xander. Aiden has been involved in the baseball program for three years, two on the varsity level. Aiden's favorite high school baseball memory is winning the conference tournament championship last year. He plans on continuing his academic and baseball career next year at Southeastern Community College and would like to major in pre-law. Our next senior is Gent Steiner, escorted by his parents, Ryan and Melissa Steiner. Gents has been involved in the program for four years, two on the varsity level. His favorite high school baseball memory is winning the SWAC tournament last year. Gents plans on continuing his academic and baseball career at Wake Tech Community College in the fall and will be majoring in business. And our last senior is JJ Von Dett, escorted by his parents, Brian and Susan. JJ has been involved in the baseball program for four years, three at the varsity level. JJ was also elected captain by his teammates this year. He is currently undecided where he'd like to attend college, but he would like to major in physical therapy or engineering. How about one more round of applause, guys, for all of our seniors. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Apex Friendship Baseball Class of 2024. On behalf of the baseball program, I'd like to personally thank you for your countless hours of dedication and commitment to this baseball program. Your leadership has been instrumental in the success of Apex Friendship Baseball. We all wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. Congratulations, guys.
Good afternoon, folks at home. Thank you for watching Live Behind the Backstop. This is Anthony Parada. Bill Martone will be joining us very shortly. We just had our senior night brought to you by Rob Mansfield, who did an awesome job. And all these seniors have contributed greatly to our program. Stay tuned for Apex Friendship Baseball. We'll be right back. Monday, April 29th, the Apex Friendship Athletic Club invites golfers of all abilities to partake in their third annual AFPAC Booster Club Golf Tournament. This year's event, being held at the Club at 12 Oaks in Holly Springs, is a shotgun start at 11 a.m. The Jack Nicholas design course is guaranteed to provide a fun and memorable experience to all who partake in the four-person scramble event, including lunch, drinks, and a dinner banquet immediately following tournament play. All proceeds from this event will ensure a memorable high school experience for the student athletes of Apex Friendship High School by providing facilities, uniforms, and equipment. Don't wait. This is sure to be another sellout tournament. Register today by clicking on the link in the description notes of this broadcast. AFPAC looks forward to seeing you on and off the course on Monday, April 29th. A comfortable Friday afternoon in Apex for the 2024 Senior Night Celebration. And now it's time for baseball. Game one of two between Apex Friendship and Panther Creek High Schools. And we are set to bring it to you live from behind the backstop on YouTube. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Patriots Baseball. I'm Bill Martone with Anthony Parada, possibly even Rob Mansfield. The Patriots and Imps nearly performed a flip-flop role in game two with the Patriots giving the Imps a taste of their own menacing medicine. Owen Searsol with his third straight complete game and third win had four strikeouts, one walk, while only giving up two runs. At the plate, Connor Payne nearly goes yard again while Buster Bloom with bases loaded strokes a three RBI triple into deep right center field. The Patriots finally break a three-game skid and look to gain some confidence as they face off today against the 2-17 Catamounts. Can the flag wavers stay the course down the home stretch? Stay tuned as there's more to come live from behind the backstop after the break and Patriots baseball from behind the backstop brought to you in part by Apex Friendship Patriots Athletic Club. Join the pack. And G Fiber, number one in customer service. We are here at Apex Friendship High School, affectionately referred to as Patriot Park. Peak of good living. As the Patriots seeing if they can add a second win in the same week. Anthony Parada, our producer extraordinaire, on the mic with me as well this afternoon. Thanks well, for having me on again. My pleasure, always enjoyable. We got Owen. Ricicci out on 
our remote camera for tonight's game. Right now, Rob Mansfield's giving us some live read in the stadium. Panther Creek Catamounts struggling here in the 2024 campaign. Patriots, right, wrong, or indifferent, looking to take advantage, advantage of that as they're sitting right around 500 overall. We'll get through some of our own live reads here in a moment. As you've overheard, Rob Mansfield giving us a read on the starting lineup for the Panther Creek Catamounts. Leading off will be Trantis, followed by Parham, Rice, Day, Doucette, McKnight, Hassler, Gooding, and Ludlam. Coach Derek DePriest in the dugout with a couple of assistants, trio of assistants, Jake Cooper and Pete. Patriots defense with Connor Payne towing the slab at Patriot Park in his outfield behind him. Left to right will be Bloom, Chaccio, and Patience. Across the infield from third to first, Steiner, Byler, Phones, and Cannon. And catching for Payne, J.J. Vondette. Got to fill some dead air here, Anthony. Not much for us to do while the stadium announcements are going on. You know, we just had a lot of excitement. It's senior night, so the guys in the Friendship Dugout are going to be hyped up. No one wants to lose on their senior night. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve seniors in the class of 2024. A very deep pool of talent for the Varsity Patriot baseball team. I believe this is game number 21 for the Patriots, I think, I hope. We'll find out here in a moment.
Or Bass again joining us in the live chat. Or where are you watching from? I, you've been joining us and I think you've shared with us in the past, but for the life of me, I'm drawing a blank, so apologize. Connor Payne on the bump. Five appearances with a 436 ERA. He's got 17 and two thirds of an innings pitched so far in the 2024 season. He has faced 91 batters, 13 strikeouts, 13 walks with an opposing average, batting average of 325. Yep, game 21 it is. Not quite a dozen people watching just yet. No worries. We got you covered. The first pitch from Connor Payne, a called strike on the leadoff batter, and we are underway. Anthony Trantis at the plate for the Catamounts. Called strike and a foul ball puts him on an 0-2 count as the leadoff batter. Payne reaches back and hurls a hard one, but misses high and away. 1-2. Breaking ball zips off the top of Vondette's catcher's mitt. With that last pitch, Payne fills up the count on leadoff batter Trantis. Swing and a miss, gets the K. First of many if the Patriots are uh, in good form this afternoon. Noah Parham. Southpaw hitter. 48 plate appearances, batting 156, falls off the second pitch. 1-1 one, one count with one out and nobody on for the second batter in the lineup for the Catamounts. Hard hit on the right side. will get past phones and make its way into right field. Brendan Patience. Gets that one in. Andrew Rice now, the second baseman for the Catamounts. 224 batting average, four RBIs with 11 hits. Payne's fastball, low and away. The pickoff, not in time. Good cut there, Anthony. Good save. Right on time. <laughs> <laughs> Better late than never. My cut was right on time, unlike uh, the pickoff well, move there. Now you just but missed it. Bryce Cannon in foul territory, approaching the Catamounts dugout, makes it two away. Still struggling to come up with a dozen viewers in the live stream. Please let us know where you're watching from. For those of you who all are already in there, Laura Bass chiming in first. The runner goes. The pitch from Connor Payne misses just above the strike zone. 2-0 count with defensive indifference. Allows Parham to reach second. Rice at the plate.
Swing and a miss. Jason Day on deck, fourth batter in the lineup. Two outs after a foul ball just a moment ago. Foul tip. 2-2 two -two with two out in the top of the first. Ground ball to Byler at short, backhanded across the diamond and the pick from Cannon. Beautiful pick there. Patriots are going to get out of that inning, giving up no runs off one hit, no error surrounded. When the Catamounts come back to the plate, center fielder Duchesne, Doucette, Duchesne. Set leads off with McKnight and Hassler behind him. Right now, though, the Patriots about to step to the plate for the first time in game one here at Patriot Park. Leading off, Buster Bloom, followed by Brady Byler batting second. Hitting third, Jen Steiner in the cleanup. J.J. Vondette with Connor Payne in the power position. Bryce Cannon in the second leadoff of the lineup, followed by Owen Sirisol, the DH for center fielder Drew Chaccio. Hayden Phones batting eighth and rounding out the order, Brendan Patience. So in the midst of looking through all the different stats and max preps, I did come across kind of a team game stat uh, section. <clears throat> see if I can sort this upside down. Last night, the Patriots batting 267 as a team with eight hits, eight RBIs, a double, a triple on 30 at-bats, 35 plate appearances. Contrasting Monday night's loss, shutout here at Patriot Park to the Imps, was a two, uh, I'm sorry, a dismal 062.062. How would you say that? Instead of a 267 batting average, a dot oh six two. Really I normally sure. just say 67. <laughs> All right, well, it was a 62 batting average, but that uh, pales in comparison as a team. They're batting 330 on the season. So not indicative of what the Patriots are capable of. Right now, Buster Bloom is at the plate. And Bloom batting 323, just about the team average on the season. 15 RBIs, 20 hits, two doubles, two triples, a home run. First two pitches from McKnight. Can't find their way into the strike zone. Outside again, fairly good velo from McKnight. Tyler McKnight. Oh, wait, we have this backwards. Hassler and McKnight. Buster Bloom. McKnight is the pitcher. Hassler. Now batting second baseman. Buster Bloom walks on four. Hmm. Looking at Game Changer, seems to be a little bit different than what I have, but. McKnight on the mound, runner goes, and he's safe. The ball falls out of Rice's glove, the second baseman. The pitch to Byler, a called strike. Do set. There we go. I got that now. McKnight deals outside. Just a three quarter arm slot delivery from McKnight. Seems to be casting across and delivering into the opposite batter's box. Just straighten that up a little bit. I think it'd be right on the outside edge. Oh, and that one gets past Hassler. And Bloom will reach. Third on a pass, well, wild pitch. Yeah, 
Anthony, I just know that uh, somebody wants a headset. Line shot into center field, gets down for a base hit and an RBI for Brady Byler. Byler batting 422 with now eight RBIs and 28 hits on the season for Byler. Steiner batting 267, takes a first pitch from McKnight that's blocked by Hassler in the opposite batter's box. Coach Derek DePriest makes his first mound visit. Try to break the momentum of the Ensuing attack by the Patriots. Right? Yeah. Got to go with it, right? I mean, Patriots and all. Onslaught. The, the, the forthcoming onslaught. Got to get some wordplay in here. Sound like a real announcer. Pick off over to first base. Toward Byler, not in time. One ball and a strike on Steiner. Steiner with 14 RBIs and a double to his record for the 2024 senior campaign. Had a bullet of a throw from third to first last night at Carey. Hey, Bill, so I've noticed on those two pickoff throws that Byler's been able to reach back to the bag standing up. Do you think he should take a bigger lead? Well, we'd have to ask Bob Flanagan. Uh, he's the expert. My opinion, if you're not getting down on the retreat, you can lead off a little further. McKnight just misses, fills up the count on the third batter of the Patriots lineup. No outs, one run scored on a hit. And Steiner works a walk in his first at bat. Byler will make his way down to second. So now here comes J.J. Vondette, who is leading the team in RBIs with 24. 24 RBIs at four doubles on 25 hits. He has 74 plate appearances, batting 417, well above the 333 team average. If there's anyone to be in this position right now with no outs and a runner on scoring position, it is this guy right here to get us some more runs on the board early. Bondette has been aggressive and effective at the plate all year. Looks at a fastball from McKnight for a 1-1 one, one count. McKnight kicks and deals, misses outside, 2-1. Umpire gives him the hammer. And just like that, it is a two and two count to Vondette. McKnight has made seven mound appearances this season. One win, one loss, and a 6.24 ERA for the junior right handed hurler. 24 and two thirds innings pitched, has 28 strikeouts with 26 walks. So kind of an almost even. Heat and Vondette draws a walk out of McKnight to fill up the bases with no outs. One run scored a few moments ago on a base hit. And as usual, Vondette 
getting his courtesy runner as he is behind the dish today. And it is the speedy junior Tino Ramirez that enters the base pass. McKnight lowing away again. McKnight's opposing batting average, 255. Hard hit on the right side. That'll get through. And, uh, yeah, Von two RBIs there for Connor Payne. Failed to mention Payne last night hit a rocket into left field. 335 hit the bottom of the fence. And I had to. I have to imagine if that were here at Patriot Park in left field at 330, the extra five feet that he had to overcome last night, that ball would have been mighty close to the top of the fence here at Patriot Park. So Payne with a two RBI single on the right opposite side, on the right side, past Rice, puts Ramirez on third, himself on first, and Bryce Cannon, a little bit of cat and mouse over at first base. With Payne very casually. It actually is not trying. Payne. It is oh. a courtesy runner, Barrett Lowe. Oh, Gasper. All right. Game changer is refreshing. Micah Gasper. It's a good thing all these kids look alike, you know, with the hat, the uniform. Bryce Cannon, 321 batting average. On a rope, that's going to get down, and that'll be an RBI single for Bryce Cannon. Gasper holds it second. Ramirez touches home. Next to bat, designated hitter, Owen Sirisol. Sirisol bats 302 on the year. Eight ribbies, a double, and a trip, uh, two doubles and a triple for the Southpaw pitcher. McKnight lowing away, kind of consistently lowing away. I don't I don't know whether to say, you know, what to change, but if he were to listen to me, he would certainly be a mess more. That's how good of an instructor I am. Frustrating. It's like being on the links, you know, and you just keep shanking it into the woods. Yeah. On that note, if you haven't signed up yet, get yourself signed up for the third annual AFPAC golf tournament being played next Monday, a week from Monday at 12 Oaks Country Club. Link to the registration form in the show notes. Go to it now, go to it later. Just make sure you go to it and sign up. 12 Oaks Country Club, affectionately referred to as uh, something like 12 balls. That's the minimum number of balls you'll lose in a round of golf at 12 Oaks. So make sure you stop by at your favorite sporting goods store and pick up, you know, a bag of used golf balls if you're as good as I am. I go through about three dozen around. McKnight deals low and away and Sirisol draws a walk. That'll load the bases up again for the third time? Yep. At least the second time here in the bottom of the first inning. Four runs have scored on three hits. Phones batting 310 on the season. He has 13 hits, three RBIs, and two two doubles. A little bit of action in the bullpen for the Catamounts right now. There you go. 
Catamounts faced off last night. Uh, was it Holly Springs? I believe it was. And I think they used four pitchers. He is so close. That is it is frustrating. 17 people watching. Thanks for joining us. Let us know where you're watching from in the live chat. Laura Bass has chimed in at least to let us know that she's out there. I know we usually get a cast of usual suspects. As you guys were able to see from the mound cam that I had on, uh, the catamount warming up in the bullpen. And now we're back to live action as Hayden Phones has a 2-1 count on him. Fouled off. Firmly into the backstop. Laura Bass watching from Cary, my own father from Florida. Christy Payne watching from Atlanta. The old ATL. Home of the Tomahawk Chop. It's become a favorite chant for the Patriots. I don't know they're going to be pulling that one out today. Sharon Dressler from the Ozarks. That's a new one for us. Phones works a walk, and that'll walk in a fifth run in the bottom of the first inning. Mark Patience on the stadium scoreboard. Five runs, Mark? Yeah, five runs. Isn't that amazing how that works? <laughs> I'm indirectly operating the stadium <laughs> scoreboard. All right, Coach DePriest is okay. coming in to relieve McKnight. McKnight. Managed to throw 36 pitches in the bottom of the first. Take a look at how many batters he faced. A uh, total of eight. Five runs have scored and bases loaded. Off so. of three hits and five walks. So what should we talk about, Anthony? we got about 20 folks that have joined us. They need to hear us say something. You know, as of right now, the Patriots are they're doing a job. They they're swinging at good pitches and they're leaving the ones that are not directly in the strike zone. We have seen from time to time as most players do this, they uh swing at bad pitches. Today we have not seen that. So let's get into Perfect some Perfect segue. Keys to the game. Keys our, to the game. Our G fiber keys to the game. See it, hit it. Right? Don't don't wait for perfection. Yeah. Don't you know, expect things whoop, that disappeared on us. See, us uh, see it hit it? Error-free defense. So far we've seen that out of the Patriots and energy. Admittedly, five runs in this scenario, it's a little bit hard to express some energy out of the dugout. But when the Patriots are, are hyped up and they're supportive of their teammates, they perform. They come to play when their teammates are cheering them on. As soon as that dugout goes quiet and cold, Eh, it gets a little rough, but those are the keys to the game brought to you by G-Fiber. I was mentioning this earlier. I think there is some energy already in the atmosphere for the Patriots tonight as it is senior night, and we all know from playing sports that you do not want to lose on your senior night as to these guys are feeling tonight, so... Keegan McCain, the first relieving pitcher of the afternoon for the Catamounts. McCann has made 10 appearances with a 13.4 ERA and patience. Strokes one into left center field. That'll be a two RBI double for the senior outfielder. 
Brendan Patience. Well, Bill, what'd you just say? See it, hit it. That's it. One of those G-Fiber keys to the game. Unabashedly, is that the right way to say that? Unabashedly uh, taken from the Yes Network, but uh, I never said I was original, so. Top of the lineup, Buster Bloom receives a brushback pitch from McCann. McCann with eight and a third innings pitched, has four strikeouts, has only given up three walks, but has allowed 24 runs in those eight and a third inning. Has faced 48 batters. Pulled hard on the left side. That'll be an RBI single for Bloom. Trantis, the left fielder, seemed to be playing surprisingly shallow. I don't know if he thought Bloom was unable to hit that foul pole in left field, but we should let him know. He already has he this has. year. <laughs> so <laughs> we may want to play him a little deeper next time. But a, a, a very kind of off-speed pitch from McCann that uh, Bloom kind of got on top of and put some top spin on it. Ball exited the infield and just immediately dropped in for a single. Speaking of Velo, inside pitch, Byler fouls it off. I know Mr. Uh, Mr. Metrics, uh, Andrew Smith is here tonight. Did uh, did either of you uh, bring a little trigger device, doodad? I did not. Not that it really matters. I've been listening to another foul ball by Byler, a bunch of podcasts lately discussing the onslaught of UCL elbow injuries in the pros and a number of veterans um, from the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s all saying it really kind of comes down to the technology, a fly ball into left center. Doucette gets under it for an out, and an RB, sack RBI for Byler scores patience from third. Steiner steps in. I believe he's 0 for 0 with a walk in his first at bat, but the pros all saying that the spin, you know, the uh, – focus on gripping the ball hard and ripping it, right, to spin it as hard as possible. And Steiner rips one through the left side of the infield between Gooding and Ludlam for a base hit. Pushes Buster Bloom down to second. So I think what they're advocating for is either go back to the older – taller threads and spider tack and and all the good grip stuff. Yeah, and let the pitchers be able to work the ball, fly ball into right, pair them under that routine fly ball that puts a second out on the board. Vondet flies out to the right fielder. Uh, so either go back to the way things used to be or basically just throw nothing but fastballs to take the stress off the UCL. I don't know which is really the right answer. Fly ball into center, Doucette likely to just get under that, and that makes it three, but not after nine score on six runs. Nine runs, six no. hits, no, no errors. errors. Let's pay some bills, Anthony. Let's do it. Conjure a world beyond your wildest imagination. I got to. With multiplayer battles and virtual realms. That is, if you wield the power of Wi-Fi 6E. I got Google Fiber. Then you can go up to three times faster, thanks to the spellbinding technology of Wi-Fi 6E. Yeah, that's why I got it, wizard. 
Game in glory with G Fiber. Now with Wi Fi 6E. Check availability today at fiber.google.com. I started the company not knowing I was ever going to start a company. Uh, so we were actually looking to build a house. We decided to build our own fence, priced out the materials, and did the job myself. If you're looking for great customer service at a great price, without jeopardizing quality, call Big Jerry's Fence. Google Fiber, customer service is straightforward billing. Absolutely. No random fees. No hidden fees. Fast, reliable internet I don't have to think about? That's the plan. Find out if your address is eligible today at fiber.google.com. Half-Pack, third annual golf tournament. Help us make it a sold-out event yet again this year. In the description of today's broadcast or the show notes later on after the game concludes, you'll find a link to register for this year's tournament. April 29th, $150. Four-person scramble includes lunch, beverages, and a dinner banquet following the competition. First pitch to the leadoff batter in the top of the second inning. Fouled off toward the Patriots dugout. Connor Payne back on the mound. Doucette falls off a second pitch, so an 0-2 count on the leadoff batter. McKnight is in the on-deck circle with Hassler behind him. The 1-2 swung on, popped up on the right side. And Connor Payne calling for it. I don't know. Uh, looked like Bryce Cannon's ball all day long, if you ask me. I'm not really thinking a pitcher should be never be that far into foul territory calling off the first baseman. But what do I know? No harm. Reset, swing and a miss, and that sends Doucette back to the dugout on a K. So, hey. I actually don't mind that. <laughs> Eat my words. Well, let the foul ball drop. You get the K in the book. Yeah, I was just about to say, maybe Payne's intention was, yeah. hey, let me rack up my, my Ks. Right. He's calling off cannon so that he could get the K. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I meant to do it. <laughs> my name's Tommy Flanaga. For all you... Uh, 90s Saturday Night Live fans that know that reference. Payne deals and right at Bryce Cannon. A bullet on a frozen rope into his glove makes it two outs. There. So Connor gets the K on the first guy and repays the favor back to Bryce Cannon. Gives him a line drive right to his glove. Everybody's square. You know, every, everything works out. Everything works hey, out. Hey, forget about it. Payne hurls a hard fastball down the middle to Hassler, but just misses below. So quick two outs in the first two batters. Popped up, left side. Buster Bloom under it, can of corn. Well... That was an efficient inning, to say the least. Quite. Payne's at 23 pitches after two as we're in the middle of the second. Anybody remember where the heck we left off? Cannon, Cirasol, Phones do up for the Patriots. Well done. Patriots and Catamounts, game one. Here at Patriot Park on a Friday afternoon. Somebody with the squeaky chair. I hear that from like 
10 miles away. Nine run lead on six hits. Catamounts picked up a hit. Is that advertised on the box when you buy that rocking chair, the extra squeak? I don't know if it picks up on the mic, but it drives me mad here in the stadium. Keegan McCann on the mound again, coming back. For the Catamounts, he relieved the starting pitcher, McKnight. McKnight faced eight batters. Gave up eight runs on five walks and three hits. He had thrown 36 pitches before McCann was called in from the bullpen. And McCann able to get the Patriots to pop out. And Bryce Cannon now is about to step into the box for his second or third time? Second. Second. Cannon had a hit in and his an first RBI. go around. I gotta get out my baseball thesaurus and just start looking up random phrase phraseology, phrase. That are, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, I'm gonna publish my own and it's just gonna be called baseball babble. I think that's a good title. On Amazon, popped up on the right side. First baseman is gonna run out of room before it hits the. Roof of the dugout for the Catamounts. Jason Day over at first made a valid effort, but those rascally roofs get in the way. Bryce Cannon launches one on the right side, but that's going to fall foul. So it seems Coach Civitello is going to start putting in some senior substitutes. As you can see here from this righty's batter's box camera angle, Simon Martone is on deck. Why does it, it look like the batter's box is pointed downhill? <laughs> <laughs> Hard hit on the left side that'll get past a reaching Gooding, and that'll make its way into left field, so Cannon reaches on a base hit. Simon is in the DH spot for Cirasol. Now in the game, number 13, Simon Martone. Officially, Martone only has two at bats for the year, and both have resulted in a walk and a stolen base after. Subsequent to that, McCann deals a bit of a sidearm, not quite a submarine, but I'll say a sidearm pitch to start off Martone's at bat. Hard hit right off the glove of Gooding, so an E5 will allow Martone to reach and push Cannon down to second. Little bit of a uh, visitor in the booth here with a carpenter bee. It first pitch to Hayden Phones, a called strike from McCann. McCann is at 16 pitches in the bottom of the second. Hard hit, fly ball. On the run is Trantis. That'll be two bounces. Bryce Cannon kind of stutter stepped around third. Martone had to hold. And that makes it a 10 nil 
Oh, wait, I should have said, yeah, 10 nil. Ten. I was going to say 10 love. Brandon Patience steps in for his third at bat. He is one for one. Ooh, McCann with the dropout off-speed pitch just fell out of the strike zone as Patience swung right over the top of it. Oh, hey, look. We're on camera, Anthony. Yeah. Wave. Hey, Mom. <laughs> 0-2 count now on the right fielder. With no outs and a runners on second and third. Hard hit back at Gooding. Across the diamond. That'll be a sack RBI fielder's choice for. And it looks as if we have a another pinch hitter in spot for the left fielder. Buster Bloom will be number six. Yeah, quick. Smith, I believe it is. Aiden Smith, another senior. Going on to play in the fall and next spring. I hate to kill a defensive B, but it's really being pestering. First pitch to Smith. Misses the strike zone. One out. One on. McCann's sidearm delivery. Oh, we have to blame uh, have to blame Mark for that. McCann finds it. Two balls, one strike, one out, and a runner on second. Hayden phones out on the base path. Number 11. Chop to Gooding. Palms it into his glove, and across the infield will be A 5-3 second out. Moves the, the runner on second base. Hayden phones over to third, though. 11-0 in the bottom of the second. We have to complete five, but I tell you, uh, we didn't quite we didn't quite get to it, Anthony, but uh, – our friends at Big Jerry's Fencings with the weather report, game time weather forecast, 82. Feels like 33. I think that should have said 83. Increasing chance of showers as the day wears on. Hard hit. Byler pops it up. On the left side will be foul. Nobody can get to it before it reaches the grass. Byler one for one on the day. Yeah, now we got two of them. I guess they want to be on the broadcast. Byler hits one into the gap and takes a spill over at second base. I think he wanted a double, but. That might be fodder after the game. Nonetheless, an RBI single. Next to bat, number three, Jen Steiner. 22 people watching. Thanks for joining us. A little bit of a, a route going on right now. If you haven't dropped us a note in the live chat, please let us know. West Fargo, North Dakota, Ashley Shantz. Man, we are getting the entire United States covered lately. And, Bill, as it is senior night, the there's going to be a lot of senior substitutions on deck, as you can see in the frame, is uh, senior catcher, number 17, Ash Doyen, taking the spot of another senior, J.J. Vondette. Steiner follows that one off into the backstop. Byler at first with two outs, an 0-2 count on the senior third baseman. 
oh, just over the top of the helmet. I think if he just stood up, it would have like just kind of like bounced off the top of the helmet. Buddy. What do you think happens if you kill one? One ball, two strikes on Steiner with two outs and a runner on first. A mere 12 nothing score on nine hits, and Steiner golfs one into center field, but not before Doucette can track it down on the run. And the Patriots pick up a few more, three in the bottom of two. Upgrade to Google Fiber and pay one simple bill every month. What about extra fees, like installation? Taken care of. Equipment? No. Data overages? There's no such thing. Find out when we're coming to your neighborhood at fiber.google.com. I started the company not knowing I was ever going to start a company. Uh, so we were actually looking to build a house. We decided to build our own fence, priced out the materials, and did the job myself. If you're looking for great customer service at a great price, without jeopardizing quality, call Big Jerry's Fence. Top of the third inning, Patriots with a 12-run lead on nine hits at Patriot Park. You heard me mention it before. If you're watching, if you're local, if you're not, hop a flight, get in town for the 29th, the third annual AFPAC golf tournament fundraiser. 150 bucks a person, four-person scramble. Whether you have people that can golf with you or not, Mr. Patience, how many spots left? It was seven the other day. Five spots left. So either sign up, you and your four, uh, three others would make it a foursome or sign up as an individual, but sign up and make it a sellout event for this year. It'll be a real hoot at 12 Oaks where there are bald eagles that nest and fly in the big old oaks. Connor Payne back on the bump. Has only thrown 25 pitches so far in two across two innings. Pretty good efficiency. Vaughn Gooding falls off the first offering from Payne. So, Bill, just want to point out a couple defensive substitutions from the Patriots. As we notice on the on-deck circle, Ash Doyen is behind the plate now. And then over at first base, taking the spot of Bryce Cannon is senior number 20, Carson Clifton. Vaughn Gooding batting 242. Has carded eight hits and three RBIs, three doubles. So he's got some wheels if he gets that ball past the infield. And then shout out to Mark Hemrick updating our game changer as we see on here Aiden Smith in left and Barrett Lowe in right. Steiner and Byler on the left side of the infield with Phones and Clifton. Chaccio still out in center. Trying to think, are there any senior pitchers that, yeah, there are. Yeah, we could very well see Ben Brockman tonight. Hard to see. We have a terrific um, turnout down the left field line. Ludlum gets one out of the park, but in the opposite direction. Take a look through the fence. It's a little hard to see it, but you can see quite a few folks down the left field line here for senior night. And not too bad of a crowd for the Catamounts. 
Ludlam strokes one into shallow left center field. Second hit for the Catamounts. Payne comes just under the hands of Trantis on his first offering. One ball, no strikes, and a runner on first with one out. We are in the top of the third inning. Oh. It seems as if that ball hit Trantis. Yeah, as soon as that ball went past, you saw Trantis look at his hand, but the home plate umpire really didn't say anything on his own, so I guess you can kind of just let your let your umpire know you felt like you got hit. It was pretty close, but I wouldn't focus on it if I were Payne. I'd just let it go, shake it off, and move on. I mean, it was close, and maybe he felt a breeze, but I don't think it touched him. Brockman appears to be in the bullpen right now. A little bit of his sidearm delivery in the bullpen. That was one camera angle I, I struggled with. It was either point the camera at the bullpen or point the camera at the mound, so... I went with the mount. <laughs> Figured that was a better choice. Give this view here versus the, uh, once a game we would look at the bullpen, but it is kind of a neat, would be a neat vantage point. If anybody wants to donate a camera, let me know. I'll, I'll hook it up. Payne comes set on the 1-1 one, one and deals just inside on the southpaw. Param. Bill, Noah, you, you said how uh, you'd use that camera one time, but in Owen Searsville's last three starts, he's gone the distance. So Yeah, exactly. So in that case, it would just be a waste. <clears throat> I need to put up a sign in the booth that says no bees. The 3-1 just misses. And that'll fill up the bases with one out. I Second baseman, number 18, Andrew Rice. Rice steps in 0 for 1. I mean, it, it armchair quarterbacking here and all, right? So disclaimering it. Just, no, I'm just thinking just, just, Pitch and catch, right? Yeah, let, him let him hit it. I mean, it's no big deal. But I also appreciate the fact that he clearly likes to throw hard, and it's satisfying, and that's his that's his mechanics. Yep, exactly. There it is. Grounder to Byler, flips it to Phones, and a 6-4-3 double play will snuff out the run that would have otherwise – registered so the Patriots and Connor Payne able to work out of trouble that was nicely done by the defensive staff of the Patriots nice little six four three with Byler at the six and phones at the four tonight yeah second night in a row that coach Civitello has flip-flopped the uh the middle infield and I actually like it to be honest I do too I I like seeing uh I like seeing the kids have to think differently, right, and not kind of do what they always know. We saw, we talked about this earlier, that Jen Steiner coming into, especially this year, I, I think he took some reps last year on third base, but he too was traditionally a shortstop, and he has become, as Bob Flanagan has said earlier in the season, probably the best third baseman in the conference. Speaking of the Flanagan gang, looks, looks like it, yeah, it looks like Cole Flanagan is going to get an at bat here on Senior Night, 
And so I just, I actually really like to see the, the kids being forced to be the athletes they are and not just get entrenched in the I am this position, right? So put them in a slightly uncomfortable situation to where now instead of having to operate on past uh, muscle memory, now it's, no, you're going to operate on being an athlete and you're going to learn how to change things up and find a new gear. And that's really what uh, we've seen the last two days with the middle infield being flip-flopped. And here comes the rain, folks. This is unfortunate. Well, here's a good one, Anthony, or a fun one. Got some rain coming in on senior night. And I did not bring any plastic bags. Doyen, <laughs> I almost <laughs> thought Doyen was just gonna say, no, I didn't get hit. That that would have been really, that would have been really an Ash Doyen thing to do. Is what to, get, to get hit and say, no, I didn't get hit. Ash is honestly one of the toughest kids I've ever met. I was on the Apex Friendship Football team with Ash when I was playing left tackle and he was playing outside and linebacker, one of the hardest people to block personally. Yeah, strong as an ox and yet one of the nicest he is. kids too. Like he just. And, uh, Tino yeah. Ramirez as a pinch runner for the catcher. You hear the Pats dugout getting loud for Cole Flanagan taking in that bat, traditionally a P.O. But we'll take in that bat. Um, we heard from Bob Flanagan himself earlier in the season say that Cole had some arm problems. Which yeah, a little him. inflammation in the shoulder yeah. that he's been working through in the off season, But nothing that's uh, going to require him to really miss any great extent. Some R and R and rehabilitation stuff. I can speak to all that stuff all too well, as I know the Flanagans can as well. But he'll be fine, and he'll enjoy his college career. But for now, he's enjoying this at bat, getting a, a chance to hit on his senior night. 3-0. Does he have the green light? Nope. Oh, <laughs> should have taken a hack Look at, at that one. Coach Civitello is giving him some. Giving him some business down there. All right. I think we ought to look at the uh, radar loop. Oh, and Flanagan. Oh. Opposite field. Oh, and he's going to reach. Rice unable to hold on to it and throws it away as Ludlam comes in to make the force at second. And Cole Flanagan with the infield base hit. I'm sure that just made Bob's night. <laughs> oh, boy, Anthony. This Ooh. is not looking good here. We better get this over quick. Foul tip. Looks like we'll be okay for a little bit, but. Fly ball, right side, foul. The catcher, Hassler, comes up with it. Carson Clifton pops out. Fortunately, we weren't able to get a great angle as our mobile camera has to come in. Well, hold on a minute. <laughs> Joining us in the booth for now, Mark Patience. Mark. Simon Martone, 32-year-old, <laughs> junior pitcher, hey, takes strike one. Everything learns at their own pace. And it takes another. Oh, hit that Ooh, one hard. Foul ball. 
Rumor is that Simon squats about 720. <laughs> reps 225 27 times. And has a fabulous beard. Simon is one for one on the day. And there's another hit for Martone. Oh, and it looks like the Pats are going to capitalize on this poor weather conditions affecting the Catamounts. And a run comes in. Here comes Hayden Foams. Flanagan Hayden. slid into third, safe. Martone is now on second base. Hayden only squats 7-10. Beautiful shot bow by our, our ringleader himself, Bill Martone. Oh, and grounder over to third. And it looks like it's going to get through and another run for the Patriots. Barrett Lowe, another senior. Stepping up to the dish. And he's going to ground one back up towards the shortstop, Ludlum, who drops the ball. And run number 15 comes across for Apex Friendship. Aiden Smith is going to step up for his second at bat. Aiden, I think, only squats about 4'10", but he did score a 35 on the ACT right here. And that's going to get through once again over on that left side of the field. And the Pats have the bases juiced. JJ showing off that 5-2-40, getting that foul ball. <laughs> Here comes the 0-1 to Byler. And Byler's going to oh, nice catch. hit it over on to left field for Hasler for out number two. Jen Steiner stepping up. McCann, who is actually approaching 55 pitches. And gonna be a, a single to right this time for Steiner. His second hit of the ball game. And Hayden Foams will come across the score for the 16th run of the game for Apex Friendship. And we are, the Pats have just hit through the entire lineup. Ash Doyen, the senior catcher, will step on up. Got Saw one pitch and it hit him. And that one almost hit him again. Yeah, Ash Doyne, a two-year starter at middle linebacker. 
for the football team. Also, I think all-conference wrestler as well. All-conference football. I think two-year all-conference football. Yeah, I think two-year all-conference football, three-year starter. And yeah, that is going to be hit. a hit to left center. And that will score another run as the merry-go-round continues. Here comes Tino in to pinch run, swapping helmets. I think he should just go without a helmet. More aerodynamic. Flanagan up again, 0 for 1 with a reach on error, and he's going to pop it up again. And that one's going to go foul. I don't know if you can really see it very well on YouTube, but Tino has fabulous hair. It's, it's very, very nice. The rain is starting to come down a little harder now. As the fans pop up their umbrellas and start heading towards the exits. And Flanagan's oh, going to drive that. Ball. Is it out? Oh. Off the wall. <laughs> two runs come across. And Cole Flanagan, a two RBI double as he hits a little selly there. When it rains, it pours. At Patriot Park. <laughs> I think that would be uh, Cole Flanagan's first double since uh, T-ball. Now, now. <laughs> realistically, traditionally a PO. Realistically, might have been his first double since middle school baseball or rec I, ball. I don't at know. Least. I don't know. <laughs> Our kids played showcase together a few years ago. I I kind of recall Cole rapping it a few times. As uh, that was run number nineteen for the Patriots. Just past the elbow of Carson Clifton. That ball was absolutely smoked. Yeah, he did good. As we said, the keys to the game, the G-Fiber keys to the game, see the ball, hit the ball, don't think about it, just react. And Cole Flanagan absolutely let his uh, natural athleticism show through there. McCann just... There's a B in here. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of Bs in here. McCann just surpassed 60 pitches, and the Catamounts do have some action in the bullpen. McCann with uh, having two and two-thirds inning has given up 13 hits and five runs. And that'll be six there. Patriots now first and third, two outs. I tell you, it was only a minute ago I stepped out of the booth to uh, film my son, <laughs> and he's already back at the plate. So I really do think we need to have a – beard growing contest between Simon and his father. Oh, no. He wins hands down. He will win. Grounder to the shortstop and that'll get the force on a fielder's choice. <laughs> the Jeez, Anthony, how many did the Patriots pick up there? Seven in the bottom of the third. Nah, we don't like that song. They actually picked up eight in the bottom of the third. They, as eight of mark. We, we got 20 on the unofficial uh, score. We got 20 on the game changer as well. Nine, three, eight. Nine, three, eight. Nine, three, don't worry, nobody's keeping track. Well, now I got to fix this. 20 nothing after three, the Patriots gaining confidence and enjoying their senior night while the rains are coming down here at Patriot Park in Apex, North Carolina. 
We got uh, all sorts of equipment getting wet out in center field. I don't know how long our center field camera is going to hold up until it shorts out. That's where our internet's coming from, too. So if everything goes south real quick, it's because our internet cuts out. The world relies on the interwebs nowadays, Bill. Mark Patience, Anthony Parada, myself, Bill Martone, we're bringing you Patriots baseball on senior night 2024. Rob Mansfield making a return visit to the PA announcing role that he has provided in years past. Ben Brockman now steps up onto the mound in a downpour. Very unusual for high school baseball in North Carolina. It never rains here. Brockman, four appearances. 29 batters faced with four strikeouts and two walks. He's going to have a hard time holding on to the ball right now. Top of the fourth or fifth? We are in the... Top of the fourth. Top of four. Oh, I done messed that up. 9-3-8. Yep, just That's all right. delete the third okay. inning or the fourth, whichever. Listen. Mark Patience listen. working that new scoreboard like it's a. <laughs> hey, listen, I, I got to concentrate here. I actually score keep as my other occupation besides being a uh, executive producer for live from behind the back. Swing and a miss, and Ben Brockman gets a K recorded. Mark Patience's day job works at SpaceX. Launching rockets for NASA. Haven't lost one yet is what I understand, Mark. Doucette shows the bunt, draws it back. One of our technical producers, Pete Sarasol, asking about the condition and weather worthiness of these these uh, camera devices water, and electrical equipment. water yeah rain and electricity go well together Brockman gets another two K's for the senior southpaw slinging it from Patriot Park Mark, are we all square out there now on the new uh, Jumbotron? Yep. Excellent. Hassler fouls one off. Doucette and McKnight went down swinging. So two Ks recorded for Brockman. And just past the thigh of Hassler. I think if he just tells the umpire he got hit, they'll let him go to first. That's what it seemed like earlier when the straight into the dugout. Two outs, two strikes. You know what that means. Time to make it happen. The one-two to Hassler. Swung on, softly looped. Well played. Oh, nice job. And Ben Brockman covers as Phones comes in and scoops it and flips it and makes it three. So a one, two, three inning for Ben Brockman and the Patriots. Brockman records two strikeouts. And a, is that a not it's not a put out per se, right? But he covered the bad bag and Took the throw from the infield. Yeah, that is a put out. That is All a right. put out. He gets the put out. Look at that. That is a put out. Phones with the, the assist. Yeah. Rocking it on senior night. Ben Brockman. I believe he's going to be attending UNC Charlotte in the fall. Along with my own son. I think it's a popular place 
to it's go really to nice school. Campus. Oh, it's beautiful. I mean, yeah. If, it, if I'm 18 years old, it's my biggest spot. I have to admit, we went on the visit, and at after going through all the uh, gymnasium stuff and the food places, my wife and I are like doing the math in our head, and we're like, okay, how much do we have to bankroll before we can just quit and then live full time on campus? Take some classes. We're good, right? Get a private suite. You know, we'll just move in and yeah, it be full time. No? No. It looked good, though. The food looked really good. And, you know, campus life, I could I could hang with the youngsters. I'd fit right in. You'd fit right in, man. Wouldn't I? Right in. Back on the bump is Keegan McCann. He no, is, we actually got oh, a new pitcher. Got a new pitcher? Oh. It is number two. These, uh, these UNC uniforms make them all look the same. What number? Number two. That narrows uh, it down. About to pull up the max preps to identify. I think I, I, think I just heard Rob Mansfield say somebody. Oh, it looks like Hassler is going oh, to all take right. the ball. All right, so the pitcher comes in as a catcher. The catcher coming in catcher as a pitcher. Catcher comes in as a pitcher. Or tomato, tomato, semantics, Anthony. Hassler, senior. Hassler Jr. As Who opposed, is the senior? As opposed to, do we have a Hassler Sr. on the team? That would be kind of weird. Wouldn't it? <laughs> 7.00 ERA on three appearances for Hassler as a pitcher. Two innings pitched, 1K, four walks, has given up eight runs. And it looks as if it is number 24, McDaniels, catching. Jason Brown stepping in. We saw him early in the season, and uh, I kind of recall him putting the barrel on the ball. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's one for one on the season. Like, very effectively putting the barrel on the ball. You know, like, well hit, clean base hit. I know Bob is very superstitious, so he would – argue I'm jinxing him but I think we're just telling the facts yeah I mean Brown steps in on the far side of the plate with uh, I don't know he looks confident to me if Hassler gets the ball middle middle I think it's going for a ride the Southpaw Junior Two balls, two strikes as the leadoff batter as we start the bottom of the fourth. Well, eat my words, but swing and a miss. Great job, Bill. I do my best, Mark. Thank you. Appreciate it. Number nine, Barrett Lowe. Taking your lead on the scoreboard. It's right now, I think. Up comes Lowe, who's Maybe. 0 for 1. Hassler deals the first pitch to low, up and in. Oh, no. Softly oh, hit no. to the shortstop, 6-3, and it bounces off the glove of the first baseman. That was kind of a little bit of a lazy throw and jammed up his first baseman. What's the consensus? Hit? Uh, day, yeah. I'd go E3, honestly. Yeah, I mean, he – Theoretically could have scooped it, but, yeah. I mean, I'd like to say the shortstop should have thrown with more vigor, but that's just me. Yeah. So low reaches, and Micah Gasper hits one, chops it past low as he advances to second. So that was Aiden Smith. Oh, Smith. Well. Here it says Micah Gasper. Somebody complain about Mark uh, Next to bat, two, Hemrick's game-changer skills. Jake, we miss you. <laughs> <laughs> now we appreciate Mark Hemrick yes, for all the work he's doing. Absolutely. We, we appreciate you, Mark Hemrick. He's great. He's be with him. He might be in the car.
Hassler bounces one off the opposite batter's box as the runners advance. Twenty love. Is that an actual tennis score? Twenty love? I forget. No. Fifteen thirty forty five. Forty. Forty or forty five? Forty. Forty. Over the top of Byler as he ducks out. 3-0. All right, 10 more to go, and then we got a tennis score. Off the plate into the glove of McKnight. Well, hey, look, I'll give this to the Catamounts. They have a lot of uh, diversity in um, playing multiple positions. Better than being kind of pigeonholed into just one one job, right? Meaning I think they've been mixing it up here with a lot of um, alterations. One ball, no strikes on Steiner. He's sporting the UNC gloves. Somehow that was a strike. <coughs> Steiner is two for three in the afternoon. Hmm. Is this direction from uh, Coach Civitello? What's going on? One ball, two strikes, one out. Base is loaded. Outside from Hassler. Mark, hold it down, please. You're really chewing up the uh, air time here in the broadcast well I mean you know. so tell us uh, are you glad that the project of the scoreboards is over and yeah. now you can just enjoy the fruits of your own labor yeah that was uh, it's been on the board for four years so really a four year project um, obviously you have to have the money to do it but then you have to get approval from everybody in the entire county, pretty much. Well, I know I've said this before on the air, and everybody is grateful for your diligence uh, over those four years to make it a reality because it's uh, been suffering, to say the least, with uh, the prior scoreboard out in what used to be out in right field. But, hey, we got these two pieces of metal out there. What can we do with those? Um, we're thinking about some things to put on there that would be – Whatever Civ wants to put on there. We can Maybe do. like Wrigley Field, we could get some pinwheels and whenever somebody hits a home run, some fireworks. Fireworks, that'd be awesome. Something like that. I'm sure the permits for that would be easy. Oh, yeah. Right? How about Seems some how fireworks can't leave the ground in North Carolina. <laughs> well, technically they're connected, right? They'd be on the metal. Ash Doyen pops it up on the right side. First baseman Jason Day is going to pick it up. Well, he didn't pick it up. He... Gets the fly ball and <laughs> picks up the out. Two out now. Doyen was one for one prior to that. Yeah, so we're not done yet. Next project is the Jumbotron for the stadium. Oh, here in the stadium? That's beautiful. Thank you. This is going to be the best baseball park in the all of the stadium. Oh, <laughs> darn. Different stadium. Well, you know, a boy can dream. I think there's room out there for Jumbo. There's definitely room. Just raise up the uh, the upper marquee, right? Put a nice big TV screen in there. and I will say the first time, you know, we had a home game and used the scoreboard, um, I did um, text uh, Mr. Clifton, the AD. I'm like, I think we could have gone bigger. <laughs> I think it looks great, and it's in the right place, and it's bright. Chopped on the right side. Hassler takes it himself, flips it over to Day, and that makes it three. So Brockman grounds into a fielder's choice for the third out as we move into five, into the fifth inning. Patriots leading by 21. 
Ish. Ish. And as long as we do not give up 12 runs in this inning. Oh, and Anthony, record three outs before that. Anthony, Anthony, We'll get out Anthony. after the fifth. Yeah, so if any of our sponsors are listening, Big Jerry, Google Fiber, we're looking for contributors to the Jumbotron. We can run commercials on it. Well, funny you say that. Before you get to the Jumbotron, this baseball scoreboard has some room across the bottom of it. If people would like to reach out to you specifically to get their placard displayed below there in the uh, live stream broadcast description show notes there's information as to how to get in contact with you so that they could harass you at two in the morning and ask that their company sponsorship be uh, just below there it looks like there's two four six seven ish yeah seven spots and i think five on the softball scoreboard spots so open Anybody who's a crossover fan between the baseball and softball world, if uh, Mr. Big Jerry himself is listening and would like to have his business advertised out there, get in touch with Mr. Mark Patience of the AFPAC board, and he'll see to it that they get that figured out and squared away for you. Patriots, after four total innings with a 21 21- you heard it right, 21-run lead in game one against the Panther Creek Catamounts. I will say um, I don't think the Patriots have taken their foot off the gas, but at the same time, you know, they're putting in subs. They're they're being respectful but yet still diligent they as competitors. They the right thing to do, but you want them to be able to go up there and swing the bat. Right. And – I, I criticized one of the other teams earlier in the season for, I think, a final score of like 31 to nothing. And I was like, geez, you know, at what point are you running up the running up the score? But I wouldn't say the Patriots are running up the score by any stretch. I think they're just playing clean baseball. Carson Clifton unable to come up with it. Wet ball in the grass. Slides under his glove as Brockman breaks to cover. Is that a weather hit or an error? Well, that's an error. I mean, it, unless the umpire is going to call the game for, for weather, I don't think you can card it differently. Consensus. Yep. E3 it is. <clears throat> Brockman deals just inside. <coughs> Well, this is going to make it fun a fun cleanup in the rain. Brockman puts one middle middle and Vaughn Gooding fouls it off into the woods. Anybody want to when you just throw the tarp on and go home and get it tomorrow or Monday. Yeah, that's not happening with all the equipment. <laughs> well, your equipment, yeah. Yeah. Nice pitch. Brockman Gets the strike zone on Gooding. One ball, two strikes. A runner on first reached on a wet field error. No outs. And so Brockman fact, tries to get Gooding chasing. Ben Brockman's dad, Rob Brockman, was the middle school varsity club baseball team coach. That's correct, along with... Oh, and Brown. Oh, and they turn two on the infield. What a play right there. 4-4-3 four, four, double play. Aiden Santabria. I thought it was Brown. My apologies. Aiden Santabria with the 4-4-3 four, four, double play. Takes it himself. Turns it over. Clifton leaps up. Comes down with it. And they beat out the runner. That was a nice little. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Swing and a miss. Two outs, a 1-1 one, one count on Ludlam. Turns in on the inside fastball from Brockman so that he doesn't get hit. 
2-1. The Rock kick deal from Brockman, and Ludlam fouls that one into the woods. Two out siren, Mark. We got sound effects? Yeah, we do. We should do the hurricane one. The hur I don't hurricane know that one. Siren, like they do at the hurricane games? Well. Where they spin the thing? Send me a link to it. Brockman goes outside, tries to get Ludlam chasing, but can't do it. How's this one for you? You like that one? Traditional baseball chant. The full count payoff fouled off into the backstop. I think that's an offensive one, though. <laughs> so you're kind of doing it in, on behalf of the uh, of the Catamounts, but uh, I, I know what you're going at, Anthony. I like it. Yeah, if anybody from the county is listening, we really could use a bathroom and a shelter for days like today. Yeah, that is the one thing. That in all honesty, I would doubt anybody from the county is listening, but uh, I'd love to think <laughs> so. I mean, heck, we got people from all over the country. And, uh, yeah, we do need proper restroom facilities here for both the baseball the and softball. the issue is the shelter. We're so far from the school. If there was right. a lightning storm just popped up. Right, there's nowhere, not enough shelter not here. Get there. Brockman deals the payoff, misses inside. Ludlam draws a walk. That was pretty crafty of the southpaw. You know what else I'd like the uh, county to help us out with? <laughs> While we're daydreaming, yeah. Some stadium lights. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's that uh, is true. That way we can play 6 p.m. games. Going to happen. Brockman comes back inside again this time on. Trantis, the left fielder. Why not? Uh, I hear the I hear those LED bulbs are really cheap these days. You can get them on sale at Home Depot. Well, Grounder to Byler across. Carson Clifton unable to backhand it. Kind of a slipping throw. I like the effort from Byler coming in charging on a on a slow roller and trying to turn it over quick. It's the kind of thing you probably don't get the opportunity to practice a lot, so you're kind of doing it on the fly as it's happening. I've heard the players say that this kid batting is an eighth grader. Did anybody <coughs> verify that? Param? Not sure. Says he's a junior, so Noah Param. I don't know if I'd ah. say eighth grader, but. Remember the fudge in the numbers. I heard First them pitch. say he's only in the eighth grade. I don't know. They must, be, must have been just messing with him. Yeah, they probably got a rough score on a test today in school. And or maybe it's because he's wearing the number eight. Maybe. Hard to say. Parham steps back in. A one, two outs. Runners second and third. Brockman deals inside. Brockman's really working the entirety of the strike zone. I've always <coughs> liked to watch Ben pitch ever since – Seventh grade. Very compact. Yep. Not a whole lot of VLO, but usually pretty accurate. Yeah, and <clears throat> Wiley with his locations and spots. There it is. Draws the hammer out of the umpire finally. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, and two on. We're in the top of the fifth. Patriots with a 21-run lead. Oh, when he beans him, that's rough with the weather. So now I jinx the accuracy piece. Thanks, apparently. Mark. Bob's going to give you – he's going to call you after the game and now complain. I'm just trying to throw out compliments. It's raining pretty good now. Yeah, it is. Yeah, if anybody's looking to get a shower, they can leave from here and go watch the lacrosse team play. Our lacrosse team is very good. They're, they're fun to watch. Well, nobody's asking me to broadcast those games, so uh, I'm not going to read any stats. 
Rice pops it up out of play. Clifton tries to get to it, but runs out of I heard a grass. rumor that um, our center, Mr. Chris Angelello, who's a lacrosse manager, might get some playing time next week. Brockman deals, gets it. 2-2 two -two with two outs. That rascally foghorn or whatever it is. Or is that a blitz? Swing and a miss. Nice. He puts him down. So the Patriots on senior night, 2024, a 21-run shutout. On 17 hits, 21 runs, two errors in the weather, so that's a little bit questionable. To so the two hits, no runs, and four errors for the Catamounts. That'll finish off game 21. We'll be back on the air next week as the Patriots and Catamounts face off at Panther Creek in game two. And then two more against Green Level to wrap up regular season conference play. And that'll be the end of the regular season conference. And we'll see what happens come, come postseason for a conference tournament. But until then, for Mark Patience, Anthony Parada, even Rob Mansfield on the PA guest appearance, I'm Bill Martone saying thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Have a good weekend. When you have Wi-Fi 6E, you can live stream your workouts. Now unleash your power. And stream your favorite live sports in 4K. Yeah! Nice! And play multiplayer games without lagging behind. I got you! But wait, do you have Wi-Fi 6E? Fiber. 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 That's what I like to hear. Do what you do best with Key Fiber. Now up to three times faster wireless speeds with Wi-Fi 6E. Check availability today 